here in Los Angeles. <laughs> like New Brunswick, well, New Brunswick is nice, but Ormocto is like no one's doing anything in Ormocto, but and smoking weed <laughs> like no one's doing anything <laughs> so in LA the weather is beautiful I don't even mind the traffic and fun shit happens in LA who wants to stay in New Brunswick hey what's up guys today we're gonna take a look at an adult film star named August Ames she had a short-lived career but she left one hell of an impact August whose real name was Mercedes Grabowski was born on August 23rd, 1994. She was born in Antigonish, Nova Scotia and grew up in Petawawa, Ontario. She attended Oromocto High School in Oromocto, New Brunswick, Canada. August was mostly Polish with 25% of her ancestry being African American. She was the daughter of a military family and both her mother and father had served. Ames' mother was known to have a rather disturbing bipolar disorder. Ames was a distraught young woman. She had alleged that she was routinely sexually molested when she was a younger little girl by her paternal grandfather. Her father refused to listen, and at 12 years old, August Ames was sent to live in a group home for unwanted children. When August was in her younger years, she had several jobs. These included working as a nanny and a horseback trainer. Ames' career took off in the adult film world when she was 19 years old in November 2013. She eventually ended up performing in over 270 adult films for companies such as Brazzers, Elegant Angel, Evil Angel, Girlfriends Films, Jules Jordan Video, New Sensations, and Sweetheart Video. In 2016, she crossed the line from adult films into a more mainstream role in Model for Murder, The Centerfold Killer. This film was directed by Dean McKendrick and was considered to be softcore in nature. Ames went on to marry a producer and director for Evil Angel, Kevin Moore. On December 5, 2017, August Ames was found deceased in a park in Camarillo, California at the young age of 23. The Ventura County, California Medical Examiner's Office ruled her death to be suicide by asphyxiate by hanging. Further toxicology reports stated that at the time of her death, she had traces of cocaine, marijuana, Zoloft, and Xanax in her system. This leads us to the question, why did she commit suicide? What led her down that deep, dark path that made her think she needed to end it all? There are a couple prevailing theories. The first theory is that she was cyberbullied into committing suicide. In her final days, Ames had used her Twitter account to express disdain for the adult industry, including her agent that she was backing out of a video shoot. This was due to the fact that the male performer that she would be working with had performed in the adult industry in what they call crossover work. What this basically means is that the man she was expected to perform with had shot scenes in a homosexual capacity with another man. Her first tweet stated, quote, Whichever lady performer is replacing me tomorrow for at Erotica X News, you're shooting with a guy who has shot gay porn. Just to let you know, BS is all I can say. Do agents really not care about who they're representing? Hashtag LA Direct, I do my homework for my body, end quote. Those that read and responded to her tweet, took to the internet a storm of messages stating that she was being discriminatory. The LGBTQ community was especially harsh on her and was calling her homophobic. Ames would go on to defend herself in her next tweet, stating, quote, Not homophobic. Most girls don't shoot with guys who have shot gay porn. For safety. That's just how it is with me. I'm not putting my body at risk. I don't know what they do in their private lives. End quote. She continued in an attempt to defend her stance because the negative tweet storm would just not stop. Quote, How am I homophobic if I myself am attracted to women? Not wanting to have sex with gay men is not homophobic. They don't want to have sex with me either. So bye. End quote. Those that knew Ames stated she was suffering from severe depression at the time these events occurred. The onslaught of derogatory tweets came at a time when she was at her lowest. Her mental exhaustion, the depression, and the fact that she was getting hate from every angle of her social media may have been what pushed her over the edge. However, there is another theory. John Ronson, a journalist and podcaster, and Lina Mzitsits, a reporter, said they felt that it may have been her final shoot which made her snap. According to Ronson, it ultimately may have pushed her over the edge. Ames had shot a scene with about five weeks before she would decide to kill herself. It was in this video that Ronson saw a sad, defeated, and hopeless August Ames. According to the Daily Mail, quote, Ronson Masitsitz said that texts from Ames to a friend said, 
Marcus Dupree, the adult male performer, had gone full on War Machine, which was a reference to John War Machine Coppenhaver, a professional fighter turned porn star who is currently serving a life sentence for brutally beating his ex-girlfriend and porn star Christy Mack to near death. Both Ronson and Masitsis describe viewing of the footage of Ames scene with Dupree as the most difficult part of the podcast project. Quote, on more than one occasion in the footage, Marcus forcefully repositions August, which visibly startles her. Masitz is said in the final episode of the podcast. August says, whoa shit. And at one point, Marcus picks up her pink thong, stretches it around her neck, jerks her around by it, and then shoves it in her mouth. Ronson said, quote, at the end of her scene, August is interviewed by a crew member to establish consent for legal purposes. She is staring straight into the camera, holding up her check for the day's work. Her makeup's gone and her hair is pulled back. She looks resigned and emotional and hollow all at once. Were you treated okay? She's asked, and flatly and quietly, she says, yes. For the first time in this footage, all the camera is focused on is August's face, and she seems like she's verging on tears. End quote. Ronson believes that was the point of no return for August Ames. What set Mercedes Grabowski off? We will never know. Her husband points towards the cyberbullying. What we do know is that August Ames was apparently the survivor of mental and physical trauma as a child. She was a strong, independent woman that went on to be nominated for Female Performer of the Year by the Adult Video News Awards three separate times. Only August truly knows why she wanted to end her life. May she rest in peace. What are your thoughts? Please be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I've got another video coming out soon, and I hope you're looking forward to it. Thank you.